there's several different factors that are going to affect our shrinkage, and you can see them here. The first is the cement con content. So as uh, cement causes hydration, if we have an increased amount of cement, we're going to also have an increased amount of hydration. So there's more water that's going to want to go towards hydration. And this is going to increase our autogenous shrinkage. Uh, the aggregate stiffness and content are also going to affect shrinkage. So the aggregate will essentially restrain shrinkage and it doesn't react with H2O. It doesn't react with our water. So if we have an increased amount of aggregate or an increased aggregate stiffness, then we're going to have a decrease in our shrinkage. So the water content is also, also going to affect shrinkage. So if we have an increased water to cement ratio, this is going to result in a more porous concrete. So we'll have a higher porosity. Which is going to result in the water being able to move around the concrete easier and thus uh, have an easier time leaving the concrete. So we'll have increased shrinkage there, um, an increased drying shrinkage. So the, the cured, curing and storage conditions are also going to affect shrinkage. So if we have better curing, we're going to have a lower porosity. and this is going to decrease our shrinkage. As, as uh, with regard to the storage condition, um, if we have a drier climate or a lower relative humidity, a lower external relative humidity, this is going to lead to increased shrinkage increased drying shrinkage because more water is going to want to leave the uh, member and uh, try to equilibrate with the uh, external relative humidity. So the type of cement is also going to affect the uh, shrinkage. So if we have type 1 concrete, we'll have a larger grain size. than type 3. So what that means is in type 3 concrete, our uh, cement, or sorry, in type 3 cement, our cement's going to hydrate quicker and more completely than in type 1. So type 3 is going to have a higher shrinkage. And then finally, the size and the shape of the specimen is also going to affect the shrinkage. So this is going to affect the distance that it takes water to leave our specimen. So if we have some kind of thin specimen with a large surface area and a, uh, compared to its volume, compared to a large volume compared with a small surface area, the water here doesn't have as much uh, distance to travel uh, compared to our rectangular section on the right. So our shrinkage is going to be larger in the specimen to the right.